It's been about two weeks since I downloaded the DaVinci Resolve 17 beta release, and over those two weeks, I've done a lot of testing. And since this is about the time when you guys would start asking me, Hey Jay, how are you liking DaVinci Resolve 17? I figured I'd beat you to the punch and make a video about it. By the way, if you missed my first video on Resolve 17, that'll be linked below. You should check it out after watching this video, of course. Also, make sure you stick around till the end because I'll be giving away a license to DaVinci Resolve Studio to someone who watches this video. Cool? Let's get started. So, how do I like DaVinci Resolve 17? In short, it's amazing. It's not perfect, but it's amazing. Let's start off by going over some of my favorite features, starting with the edit page. I would start off with the cut page, but I honestly don't use the cut page that often anymore. What are you gonna do? Of all the new features added to the edit page, the two that I've gotten the most use out of are the auto align tool and the source clip adjustments, but I'm sure that over a long enough timeline, I'll find myself using things like 3D keyer and the timeline and bin sharing tools as well. Also, I still need to try out the scene detect tool. I keep forgetting to do that. Remind me in the comments to let you know how that turned out. I'm gonna try using it when I edit this video. The auto align tool makes it possible to automatically sync clips in the timeline. Before Resolve 17, all the syncing had to be done in the media pool. And once everything is synced up, you can turn those clips into a multicam clip or a compound clip. But honestly, I still hate working with multicam clips in Resolve, so I just cut everything up manually. The source clip adjustments allow me to make a ton of adjustments to a source clip before editing it into a timeline, which is a huge benefit for me because I just got the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 6K and I can make all of my raw adjustments right there in the inspector. I can also add lots, remap audio and all sorts of other cool stuff. The other thing I've been using a lot in the edit page are the new Fusion titles. Before Resolve 17, I stayed far away from the Fusion titles that were available in the edit page, but the ones they have available now are a lot better looking. For example, this one. Pretty cool, right? Okay, let's move on to the color page. Again, there are a lot of really cool new features here, but I haven't really found myself taking advantage of all of them yet. I've played around with Magic Mask a little bit and false color's really cool for getting proper exposure, but honestly, the tool that I've been using the most is the color warper. It's honestly making the color correction and color grading process so much faster and easier. In the correction stage, I use it to correct my skin tones without having to mask them out. And in the grading stage, I'll use it to dark in the wall behind me, add or subtract saturation from my skin, and shift the hue of basically whatever I want. And I love that I can just click on the image and drag it around to make my adjustments. Honestly, I'm gonna have to make a new color grading workflow video because of this tool. It's it's amazing. One tool that I'm still waiting to use more is the HDR color palette, which I'm really excited about, but I just haven't shot anything that has that wide of a dynamic range yet. It'll come though. Keep an eye out for that video. Moving on to the Fusion page, honestly, I'm still not that big of an effects guy, but I am learning. I'm really enjoying the fact that we have audio on the Fusion page now. It makes lining up visual effects with sound effects or visual effects with dialogue cues or visual effects with you get the idea. Also, the new shapes nodes are pretty cool. Look, I made a spinny star thingy. Can you tell that I'm still a fusion beginner? Let's move on to Fairlight. Now, this might surprise some of you, but I haven't really found myself using the Fairlight page any differently than I was before. All of the tools I use on a regular basis are pretty much exactly the same, with the exception of the buses. For those of you who don't know what buses are, they're basically a way to route tracks to other tracks. For example, I typically have the dialogue for my videos on two different tracks, so I can do things like J cuts and L cuts, and when I edit my audio, I'll route those two dialogue tracks to a bus so I can edit them together as if they were a single track. That feature was available in DaVinci Resolve 16, but they added a send and out feature to the buses to give them more flexibility. This will come in handy on larger projects down the road, but so far I haven't really found myself using them that often. In fact, most of the new tools in Fairlight are really geared towards larger projects. I don't think I'm really going to dive into Dolby Atmos in a simple YouTube video, and the new audio core engine doesn't make a huge difference when your videos are only a few audio tracks deep. So that's it 
it for my favorite features. What about bugs? A lot of people in the comments of my first video about DaVinci Resolve 17 said that they were experiencing a lot of bugs. Some even said they couldn't install it at all. Honestly, that hasn't been my experience, but I have noticed a couple things that I hope will be fixed in the coming updates. First of all, remember when I mentioned audio in the Fusion page? Well, a couple times after playing through a clip that has audio in the Fusion page and then going back to the edit page, the playhead would just go crazy and start playing the video and I wouldn't be able to stop it. I ended up having to close Resolve and restart it. It was weird and I have no idea what caused it. Also, voice. <clears throat> Also, I seem to be getting the GPU memory full message popping up a lot more than I did in Resolve 16, which is weird because thanks to the color warper, I'm using far less correctors on my clips than I was before. Real quick, has anyone else noticed these bugs? Let me know in the comments. Also, after doing a little bit of research and talking to some people in the comments in my last video on DaVinci Resolve 17, it seems as though some of the bugs being reported are specific to Mac users, while others are specific to Windows. Personally, I'm a Windows guy, but I still haven't seen a lot of the bugs that other Windows users are reporting. Not sure what that's all about, but as I get more clarity on the subject, I'll let you know. Apparently there's a section in the forum where they're talking about all this stuff. If I can find it, I'll link it in the description. Now, if this was a full release of DaVinci Resolve 17, I might be a little concerned about these bugs, but this is only the first beta release, so there's plenty of time to fix them and make Resolve 17 just as stable, if not more so than the previous versions. All in all, I'm loving DaVinci Resolve 17, and I'm sure that as I work on more complicated projects and as I get more comfortable with Fusion that I'll start using more and more of the new features available. But for now, just the tools that I've been using have made a world of difference in my editing workflow. But I will say this, in order to experience the full capabilities of DaVinci Resolve 17, you're really gonna wanna upgrade to DaVinci Resolve Studio. And I just so happened to have an unused license to Studio right here. It came with the Pocket Cinema camera and I already had Studio, so I don't need it. If you want it, comment down below and tell me why. That's it. That's all you have to do. I'll be picking a random winner out of the comments on Friday, November 27th and announcing the winner on my community tab the same day. So make sure you set a reminder to check that out so you can get a hold of me so I can actually give you the license key. Good luck to you all. And with that, if you want to learn more about the new features in DaVinci Resolve 17, click here. And for more tools, tips, and tricks that'll make you a better video editor, make sure to subscribe to the channel and hit that bell so you don't miss anything. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.